What's up guys, Damien Keys here, welcome back to the channel. So last week I made a video about Live Nation and the proposed changes that they are making moving forward and there are some big ones. And if you haven't seen the video, we will put it just about here. So click that and go and check out what the fuss is about. But that video got over a hundred thousand views over a week. So A, thank you very much for watching it, but it really touched a nerve with you guys, probably with all of us, because the music industry is going through a bit of a turmoil right now, especially if you are a musician who makes a living from playing live. If you are out there promoting your work live, if you are gigging or touring or trying to get on festivals, things have closed down. And even worse than that, things are looking to change moving forward. Personally, I own an events company and we lost over 900 events in the first three weeks of lockdown. And as so far, we have lost over 2000 venues. This has been pretty crippling and looking forward, it's going to be a very interesting place when the lockdown does start to shift. So whilst we don't know how long it will be until the full lockdown is lifted across the world, 90% of music venues have said that they cannot survive this if it goes past six months. Now we are well past the three months mark, so that is pretty terrifying. And over the last couple of weeks, a lot of big names in the music industry have signed a petition to go to the US Congress to say that these venues need some help. They need some financial support, which is fantastic. People in the likes of Dave Grohl, Steve Aoki, Lady Gaga, Billy Eilish, Jimmy Eat World, some huge names have signed this petition. And I will also make sure that that is in the description below so you can read that letter which is going to Congress. But these are the biggest artists in the world, right? I mean, these guys have the power to get in front of huge audiences. These guys have the power to get so much attention that they can get in front of the US Congress. But we don't. I mean, we're just musicians who go and make a living. You don't have the power to do that or to make a difference. Or do you? From here on in, we have to take responsibility. Whether you are 15 years old and you are about to play your very first gig, or whether you are Ed Sheeran and you have made a billion dollars from your music, right now, the music industry needs to come together on every single level because there are things that all of us can do to take responsibility to fix what has been broken in the music industry, especially over the last three to four months. So now is not the time to pass the buck and leave this to Lady Gaga and Dave Grohl and Jimmy Eat World and the biggest artists in the world while we wait and see what happens and hope for the best. Now is the time where we can take control. And one of those things is that we need to write a letter to our local member of parliament, our local representative of government. And what we need to do is we need to back this bailout for financial assistance across the board when it comes to our local venues. I might not have the power across the world, but I certainly have a say in my city. I can write to my local MP and I can tell them what's happening. And I can say as a musician, this has torn a hole in our community and we need that venue because that venue is something that holds together the entire music community in this city. We need it and therefore you need to do something about it. That one letter, that one email will make a difference if we get enough people doing this. If you go and get a thousand musicians from your local area who can actually whip up some support and actually get those letters, get those emails to that local official, that local MP, that local member of parliament, that has to be looked at. Because if we can get that one letter or that one email times by a thousand musicians in your local area and they can whip up some support for that local venue and that goes to that local MP, that local member of parliament, then when it comes to dishing out all of the funds, there will potentially be some extra funds for that venue or the venues in the city. We need to look after the arts and the people with the money can divvy down some more money. We need to push them towards it. Number two, we can help by taking responsibility for promoting shows outside of our own shows and promoting the venues in our area on our social media. Do you follow the local venue on your Instagram? Do you follow them on your Twitter? Do you follow them on your Facebook? 
Probably not, not many people do, but why not? Why can't we actually start showing our support by making that a hub of the community, by following all of the venues on our social media, and when they're posting, we're resharing, we're reposting, we're trying to say to the city, look at the great music that's being played, look at the great art that is going down in these music venues. We need to get together and we need to go there because that doesn't just support the local art, it supports the vehicle that drives that, which is the local venue. Plus, at best for you, it's more things that you can put on your social media. It's another thing that adds to your story of your social media. This is my city. This is my venue. These are cool bands that I like to see at my local venue. This is more things. You're constantly telling me, I'm not sure what else to put on my social media. Bang, there is another thing that you can add in every few days. This is a great venue in our community. And for people who don't live in this city, you now know that. And I'm gonna push their, their venue and I'm gonna push some of their shows as well. And number three, how many times have you played a venue to a handful of people? And it sucks, right? It's rubbish and you're just playing and thinking, no one's turned up to this gig or nowhere near enough people have turned up to this gig. What a rubbish feeling. Well, if we're gonna have that feeling, it swings both ways. How many of you guys go to local venues on a week to week basis? How many of you go there to drink? How many of you go there to watch other bands? And I'm not talking about once every so often when your mate's band's playing. I'm talking about how often are you there supporting that music venue. If you're there twice a week, great, high five yourself because that is fantastic. You are showing your support to that local venue. But if you're the type of person that only goes there when your band's playing or possibly when a mate's playing and then you cry when that local venue closes down, you didn't take the opportunity and you didn't take responsibility. And more importantly, if you know those bands that play the gig and then leave straight after they've played and they don't stick around for the rest of the band, then you need to get hold of that band and you need to say, if you do that again, I will never, ever play with you on our show again. Because right now, we need people in venues, not just going there for selfish reasons. The way it works is simple. You wanna play Wembley Stadium. If you wanna play Wembley Stadium, it starts in the local venue. It starts in the venue that holds 100 or 200 people. And that's how you cut your teeth. That is the point where you learn, you get the experience, you get to practice, you get to figure out what works and you get better and that grows from 50 to 100 to 200 to 500 and it grows and grows and grows. And number four, and this one's a big one, lastly, we call on the big bands. We call on the biggest bands that have ever come from our city. And we put pressure on them. And we say to them, your city and your venue needs you now more than ever. Because they have so much power, not just to promote the local venue, but also to do something that has never been done before. Because imagine this for a scenario. I live in Brighton, which is on the south coast of the UK. Now, one of the biggest bands that has ever come out of this city is Royal Blood, a huge, huge band. And I'm a, I'm a massive fan of that band. But imagine if on their next tour, whilst they're doing arenas and stadiums, imagine if they allocate one extra day just one day to play the local dive bar, the local bar that holds 200 or 300 or 400 capacity venue. And they put on that show, but they charge the same amount of money as they usually would. In fact, no, they charge more. They charge one and a half or twice as much as the ticket sales that they normally sell because it's such an intimate gig that people will want to say, I will there. It's a supply and demand issue and they try and get 400 people paying 100 quid or $100 or 150 or $200, which they will be able to do. And then they take that and they donate it to that venue. And the venue gets an extra 30 grand or 40 grand or 50 grand. And yes, it's not ideal for Royal Blood, but Royal Blood played that venue. I know because I was there. I was one of the people in that crowd when there were 30, 40, 50 people when there wasn't this huge butt. So therefore, the big bands need this to work for the smaller bands. They need to have the respect to look back and see where they've come from. And I'm talking to you, Arctic Monkeys from Sheffield that need to play the lead mill. I'm talking to you, Ed Sheeran, who's a billionaire that can go back to Luna in Ipswich and play to 50 people and instead get people rammed outside who are all gonna pay 100 quid and that can go to that venue, which will keep that venue going for at least the next 12 months. The music industry has been 
decimated over the last couple of months. And we don't know what it's going to look like. But one thing I do know is we have to get past banned politics in a local area. We have to be an inclusive community. We need bands helping bands. We need artists helping artists. And we need everybody helping venues. We have to go above and beyond. Because if we don't, there will not be venues left because they're already struggling. They were struggling six months ago. There are so many venues that I talk to that just are one or two gigs away from closing the doors at any moment. And that would be a disaster because if we don't have venues, then we don't have bands who can cut their teeth and improve. And I want you to think back. I want you to think back to those first gigs that you did. For me, growing up in Swansea, there was a venue called The Coach House and it was, an absolute shithole. Anyone who's from Swansea, or anyone who's played there would know it. It was underground, it was damp, it was horrible. It was the greatest place I've ever been in my entire life. And I loved it. And what is it now? That's right, it's a trendy wine bar. It's not a band venue, it's a trendy wine bar. We can't have that happen to some of the most prestigious venues in the entire world. And now is the time to fight. So guys, what can we do today that can help these local venues and more important, the local band music scene? How can we build an inclusive band music scene in your town and your city? By networking, by helping, by bringing people together, not just the bands, the artists, but the fan base as well. Now is the time that we have to pull together, work hard. I wanna know what are you going to do this week that helps your community and helps your music venue in your local area past just your music, your band, and your socials. I wanna know, and I wanna know in the comments. What can you do? What are you gonna do? And if you do write to your local MP or your local member of parliament, then I wanna know about it. I want it in the comments below. Now is the time for us to make a difference. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I think this is a big one. But if you can do me a favor, like, subscribe, the usual stuff, more importantly, just come and be a part of this community because I'm so proud of what we're building. But otherwise, get ready to play because when this goes away, I want everyone out there playing more than they've ever played before. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.